Welcome back to London. We're Brandon and Alyssa. In our last two videos, we showed you 11 of our favorite markets to eat and drink at. This week, we're sharing with you our favorite pubs and everything else we ate and drank during our three-week visit to this incredible city. So grab a pint, let's go. to Swift's where Chaz is a bartender and this has been open for six years. He's told me that they have the best Irish coffee. What's your favorite drink here? Probably the Irish coffee. Really? Yeah. It's All right, let's see if it lives up to the hype. <laughs> Most famous drink aside from the Irish coffee. Irish coffee, the Scorpino. Scorpino. Yeah. What's in that? Uh, it's lemon sorbet, elderflower, and prosecco. Ooh. It's delicious. And what's your favorite drink? It's the Irish coffee. Irish coffee. That's super too. It is the too. best. It's a big Tito soda guy. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got Jameson Castmate Stout Edition. You've got a swift blend of coffee, which is like a deep, rich blend, some Demerara sugar, and then you've got a local cream from Soho Dairy, really high fat content, delicious, uh, ham whipped, and a little nutmeg on top. Uh, it's delicious. It's definitely worth them being number 30 on the top 50 cocktail bars in the world. Just outside Borough Market for our first proper pint here at the Market Porter. Conveniently located next to Borough Market, there is an upstairs dining room, a downstairs pub, and an outdoor patio for people watching. We are also told that they have a fantastic Sunday roast. However, we were here just to stop in for a pint of Guinness for five pounds. We've just come out of the Spitalfield Market and we walked by this cool pub that I read about online. The Ten Bells Bar has been around since 1666 and was a popular watering hole for Jack the Ripper. So as if this tiny pub wasn't spooky enough, I just found out that Jack the Ripper's final victim was last seen here, and she was found across the street. I'm just making my way now to meet Lindsay for a pint at the Mayflower Pub. What is the historical significance of this pub, the Mayflower? So the Mayflower pub is supposedly the last stop that the notorious ship 
took before it headed across the Atlantic to land on the east coast of the US. That's why they have the British and the American flag. Yeah, it's one of the few places in London that you see an American flag. And great pines. <laughs> The Mayflower is in the suburban area of Rotherhite where Chaz and Lindsay live, so we were here all the time. The food is well executed British fare and the view and vibe simply cannot be beat. Chaz was weary about us including this one as he doesn't want word to get out on his favorite pub. So if you see him in here, be sure to buy him a pint. It's like a caramelized onion jam on top or something. Some bitter greens, broccoli, veg, mash. This was delicious fish and chips. We forgot to take a photo, but trust us, it was great. And the tartar sauce, a win. <laughs> So tonight's dinner, we picked up a couple of friends from Kansas City. Steve and Cindy are visiting us. We found them. <laughs> Something important to note about London is if you have a large party, you must have a booking. This place had great reviews and was an awesome spot for six people. Our friends were only in London for one night, so we needed to find a spot that captured a London pub vibe, but also had fish and chips. And this place delivered. Thanks again to Steve and Cindy for the visit and for the amazing dinner. The game is you take your first sip. You have to sip it all the way down to split the E. So you have to drink as much as you think it's gonna get between the E and the closest wins. It's quite a really fun game. Oh, uh, you had a home field advantage. I didn't come close. Love Guinness too much. I've taken way too much. <laughs> So this spot, Eat Tokyo, has some super cool cheap eats and some authentic Japanese food. So I'm dragging the girls in. We're going to try it out. It's one of the few places that you can find a full meal for under 10 pounds. Here in Notting Hill, everything is probably about 15 to 20 pounds per meal. This is a place where we can get some great food for a reasonable price. This is amazing. We've been given this massive menu, so we're going to start studying. It's like a school binder. Look how many pages there are. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> We've looked through the ginormous menu and I have chosen the mixed tempura bento. It is 12 pounds. I am getting a shio yaki bento. They have one for 10 pounds and it comes with either salmon or mackerel, but this one comes with both for 13 pounds so we can show you guys. I have decided on the small maki rolls. I want to do a yellowtail roll, a tuna cucumber roll, and a side of edamame. All for under 10. Thank you. Thank you. This is a courgette. Not to be confused with a zucchini. Zucchini. This is a fan of aubergine, which is also known as eggplant. Oh, this is good. You guys have to try this. <laughs> this temper is super high quality. You can tell, like, the battery, it's like sometimes it can be too heavy or too light. This is like a perfect in between. It's crispy. All the veggies still have like a fresh bite to them. They're a little bit toothsome, so they're not overdone and soft. It's just a really well done tempeh. Are you gonna eat the tail? <laughs> you know your boy eating the tail. All in all, for under a tenner, that's what they say, right? Under a tenner. You get a lot of food. Cheers. So we are going for Chinese food. We are in Chinatown. We're going to Lindsay's favorite Chinese spot next. Old Town. Old Town 97. This is the spot. I used to work one street over. This is where they would take us after shift because it's open. It used to be open 24 7. So we took our horse down to Old Town Restaurant right here. <laughs> It's easy to see why Chaz and Lindsay love this place. It's open until 3.30 a.m., all the dishes are served family style, and they range from nine to 14 pounds. Everything is so flavorful. Don't miss out on the crispy shredded beef or the pork belly. There's usually a queue, but it's always worth the wait. Staying in Chinatown while drinking and exploring one night, we needed a quick bite and found this to-go buffet spot. 
They had a ton of options and you get to fill up your to-go box with as much as you can for 750 pounds. I had a bit too much to drink and accidentally tried to pay with the Canadian money because the queen is on both currencies. Whoops. Elizabeth, come back with the goods. <laughs> it was weird. Young Chen, 750. Good deal. And this place is full and it looks good and there's skewers and it's called beer and skewers and beer. This sounds like everything we want in the world. Yeah. So we're gonna go inside. Yeah, let's see if it's any good. style you out, they tee you up on the little grill, they robot us around, and I think that we're in charge of our own destiny, but they'll also help out if they see something overcooking. Bacon rack mushroom, some sort of lamb rib, beef belly, pork situation, spicy chicken, prawns, and there's some rice coming, I think. There's like a top rack, in case you're done and you're not ready to eat, you just top rack it. I wonder what this area is. The hanging rack. <laughs> This place was great. Everything was seasoned perfectly. I'm a big fan of interactive food, so cooking our skewers and eating them right off the robata was really fun. The prawns were incredible, and my favorite was the bacon-wrapped mushrooms. Also, the beers were cheap. Don't be intimidated by the loud music or the hot grills. This is an awesome spot for a fun, out-of-the-box date night. As per usual, mouse tail for all of your coffee needs. This is where Lindsay works, so we visited her quite a bit. But they do have great specialty coffee and amazing pastries, all for a reasonable price. Oh my god, she's making art for me. That's so good. <laughs> We're at the vault, just underneath the Tower Bridge. Uh, what a cool spot. Originally used for coal storage, this hidden cave was converted and opened in 2007 to be one of the coolest spots to grab a pint in London. Located directly under the Tower Bridge, it can be easily missed unless you know where to look. Located near Tower Bridge in Southwark is the Horseshoe Inn. I found this pub while looking for an outdoor spot to do some editing. There's a large patio with heaters, a great menu, and cats. I got stuck here for longer than expected when a storm rolled in, and I got to see the old building withstand the rain. It's a charming pub with a decent priced pint right in the center of London. And, did I mention, there's cats. Across the Thames near beautiful Greenwich Park is what some call the most beautiful pub in all of London. Built in 1887, nicknamed the Jewel of the Thames and a favorite watering hole of Charles Dickens. It's a bit out of the way, but definitely worth the trek. If you want to see more of what we ate but didn't record for YouTube, head over to Instagram and follow us there at here's underscore good. Make sure you subscribe. Next week, we're going to show you everything we did in London that didn't involve eating. And we celebrate Lindsay's birthday on Halloween and my birthday on Guy Fawkes Day. See you then. <laughs> Brennan's first beans on toast. First I'm into it. Today. Open his first can of beans. That's, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz is supposedly making lasagna. It's going really well. It's going good so far. We will update on the finished product. <laughs> <laughs>